Because Guru Sahib said so. How much, why a Sikh shouldn't smoke? Because Guru Sahib said so. Everything a Sikh should do is whatever the Guru says. Guru ne kehta e galtya karna ni. Do what the Guru says. Maharaj ne kehta ki kutha khana hai bilkul galtya se kewaste. Te Sikh ne kade bhi kutha ni khana. Halal mi. Never ever touch it. Stay away from it. This is not some joke. This is a bajar kurad. For a Sikh to be in halal meat is a bajar kurad. Guru Sahib never allows it at all. It's the biggest no-no. One of the biggest no-nos alongside smoking for a Sikh. Amritari or not, we cannot go into any establishment that serves halal meat. If you go into a restaurant which is serving halal meat, don't eat there. If you want to eat in a restaurant, eat in a restaurant which is either vegetarian or doesn't serve halal meat. Don't go near halal meat whatsoever. Firstly, we don't have to worry about why. Guru said so. That's enough. But you see, it's got no rahim. Sikhi is all about daya and halal meat has got no daya. But you see, it's got no rahim. Sikhi is all about daya and halal meat has got no daya. If you watch the videos on YouTube, you can watch it how they kill the cows, how they kill the camel, how they kill the goats. They don't do chatka, which is this way. Chatka starts with the back and goes downwards. Yeah? They start from the neck and go upwards. Where are all the pain senses? In the back, in the spinal cord. So we go from that way downwards, not we when I say the hung sings, they go through that way, chatka, and they go this way to cause maximum pain. And they do the small churi all the way up. How can we accept that? It's be rahim. So we go from that way downwards, not we when I say the hung sings, they go through that way, chatka, and they go this way. To cause maximum pain.
and they did the small churi all the way up. How can we accept that? It's bare There's no rahim in there. There's no rahim in there. There's no rahim in there. Justin Matos, what did you find as you returned to Iraq this last time, Dar Jamal, about depleted uranium and its effect on Iraqis? Overall, the country has seen a massive increase in cancer rates from the 1991 Gulf War up to present, even according to official Iraqi government statistics. In 1991, for example, there were 40 registered cases of cancer out of 100,000 Iraqis. By 1995, four years after that war, that number had jumped to 800 out of uh, 100,000 Iraqis. There's no rahim in there. Uh, and then Dar, by 2005, say, as that we number show, had doubled. I, Dar, as, we, as you speak, I just want to say we're going to be showing images, and I want to warn our TV audience, um, for our radio listeners, um, if you want to go to the website, you'll be able to see the kind of images that, uh, that you captured, Dar, when you were in Iraq. Go ahead. these types of birth defects, she said. There, there are types of uh, congenital malformations that she said they don't even have medical terms for, that some of the things they're seeing they've never seen before. They're not in any of the books or any of the scientific. There's no rahim in there. They don't do chatka, which is this way. Chatka starts with the back and goes downwards. Yeah? They start from the neck and go upwards. Where are all the pain sensors? In the back, in the spinal cord. It's the shokhat, the ritual slaughterer, has a very, very sharp blade, and it, with a very quick motion, runs it across the throat of the animal, and the animal dies instantaneously. There have been times in history, even relatively recent history, that kosher slaughter was being investigated for being, not, being un inhumane. In kosher slaughter, there's meant to be as little pain as possible. It is, it is, there's no pain that the animal... And let, let's talk about exactly how that goes. The shochet, the ritual slaughter, uses a very, very smooth blade. He's constantly checking it. He always, always, if you ever watch one, it's very interesting. They're always looking at their their knife every 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 time that they every time that they're going across the throat of an animal. They're checking to make sure there's no nicks or cracks or dings in the knife. That it's going to be a completely smooth blade. It's one very rapid movement, instant. You know, you can ask doctors, surgeons, who are involved in the surgery, and when they're involved in the surgery, they're using very, very uh, smooth, sharp knives or tools that, they, that they're using to do their operation. Sometimes they get cut while doing it, and they don't even realize that they're cut because it was such a, a slick motion with such a smooth knife. They don't even realize that they've been cut until, you know, after uh, they got blood coming out of their finger. You ever get a paper cut, right? Sometimes you don't even realize, oh God, my hand's all bloody. With, with such a thin, 
smooth knife and such a, a quick cut, the animal cannot, does not experience any pain. But now we're going to talk about something even a step further that's extremely interesting and something that really hasn't been discovered until relatively recently. In every animal and even in the human being, you have two major arteries that are going up and connecting to the brain. One is in the front of the neck, that's your carotid artery, and one is, towards the, is by the vertebrae of the spine, like vertebrae, ver, the, ver, the vertebral artery. Okay? One is in the front, one is in the back. Both go to the brain. In a human being, it's called the circle of Willis. I don't know, I, I think in animals it's, it's a different term that's used, but this is the center, the center station of all the, where the arteries meet and where the blood flow to the brain goes. So, in kosher slaughter, where is the animal slaughter? You don't chop the animal's head off. You slaughter it in the front by, by its, by its um, throat. Now, many of us could think, and it was thought at one time, that wait a second, you cut the animal in the throat, but there's still an artery in the back that's going to the brain. So meanwhile, there's blood still going to the brain. The animal's still alive. It's still suffering. You only cut it in the front. So far, so good? You only cut it in the front. There's still blood flowing through the brain. In the back, the vertebral artery. One thing that's very interesting, by every single animal that's kosher, every single kosher animal, without exception, the, before the arteries go to the brain, go to the circle of Willis, this center <coughs> where all the blood goes, on the kosher animals, the arteries meet before they go up. Meaning that when the animal is shechted, when the animal is slaughtered, even in the front, even just on the throat, the blood flow to the brain stops instantaneously because it's connected beforehand. I have a little um, picture over here, a little chart that I'm going to pass around. You get a better idea of what's being said, of what we're talking about. But on, on the non-kosher animals, a pig, for example, the vertebral artery stays in the back and the carotid artery in the front. And if you were to shech the pig, if you could do such a thing, the animal, the pig, would still be suffering. Why? Because there's still a lot of blood flow to the brain from the vertebral artery in the back. You only, you only sever the front artery. The back one is still, is still pumping blood. But in kosher animals, they meet before they get to the top. So when the animal is slaughtered in front, all blood flow to the brain is cut instantaneously. The animal suffers no pain. Any movement that you might see is like, you know, when you're, when you're a kid chasing lizards, you ever catch a lizard by its tail, and then the lizard, it, 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 like, it like breaks off, and the lizard, the, the, the tail starts like dangling around for a little bit, it's still like plopping around, even though, even though it's off. So this is, this is a similar thing, you know, if, if you see a kosher animal that's been slaughtered properly, any movements and, and you know, whatever, is, is just ending nerves that are, that it, the animal has passed away already. 